The priority is to get back to work as soon as possible and start working for Mumbai as we have been. Mega Magic Picks now exclusive. Aditya Thakre's first and exclusive conversation after the crucial BMC elections speaks to us as the Sena's top brass brainstorm strategy in a meeting at Matoshri. BJP willing to sit in opposition, that's what we're hearing from the BJP camp. Party leaders expected to talk strategy in a meeting at the Chief Minister's residence, Varsha, this evening. Meanwhile, with 31 seats in hand and the ability to be kingmaker, the Congress party also goes into a huddle to decide its next move. Rate will always be higher in a private sector. Are you going to disclose the privacy and confidentiality of a patient? No. With alarming rise in C-section surgeries in India and a special report, we're asking you, do you need that C-section? You're watching The Big Story. I'm Amata Balachandra in an exclusive interview to this Shasha of Magic Pricks. Now, Shiv Sena Youth Wings Chief Aditya Thakre talks business. Listen in as Sena's Crown Prince talk about the political scenarios post-BMC verdict. Also, what is Sena's stand on issues that plague the city of Mumbai? Listen in. Congratulations for the big win. It's of course 26th year for the Shiv Sena in the BMC elections. So when we talk about issues, because Mumbai as a city we know for the fact it's good in terms of infrastructure, but uh, in the last one year of course potholes, uh, citizens, I mean BMC has got a lot of flack in terms of potholes and of course roads, transport. So what is the Shiv Sena solutions for that now in the coming five years? It's not just the last one year. and. Um as I've said it before, that I wouldn't lie that there are no potholes or no issues. But for the last 20 years, the Shiv Sena has been working. And um, as you rightly said, it's the 26th year for the Shiv Sena in power. I don't think without uh, making an effort to solve those, the citizens of Mumbai, which is such a vast city with so many people, so many diverse people, would have their faith on a single party. Yesterday, I was speaking to a couple of journalists or bureaucrats and all. And uh, they were the same opinion that to fight an election with such heavy incumbency, and after 20 years to win it again and being emerging as the single largest party. It's a big win for the Sena, of course. Uh, over the last three, four years since I've got active into the civic issues, you must have seen and hopefully very soon you'll be accompanying me also when I go out on uh, nightly rounds to check the potholes or roads or water issues. Of course, there are a lot of issues, some that we've solved, which we've put up as hoardings, and uh, some that we are yet to solve, which we've put as promises. But if you see throughout the campaign also, We've only spoken about issues, solutions and the work done. There has been no negative campaign from the Sena. So now on priority, which basically a problem is that, that Shiv Sena is going to pick up and going to give an immediate solution on priority to to, to do list? No, every uh, department of the BMC is very important. It is priority that every department works very smoothly. Of course, roads, roads if you see right from 2012, each year about 1000 roads have been taken by the BMC to resurface. This year also as we speak right now, there are 450 roads that are being resurfaced. So, uh, when it comes to roads, not all roads can happen together. There are a lot of jurisdictions and also traffic issues. As in when traffic gets diverted, the BMC gets the road from the traffic police to shut down and work on. That is a major issue, of course. Uh, clean water and sanitation, uh, we're constructing uh, sewer treatment plants which will bring back about 2,700 MLD, that's million litres a day, back for non-portable use. That is another thing. Pumping stations, we're finishing the one at Gazdarban by March. Uh, hopefully that once it starts off, like Britannia, Haji Ali, Love Grove. If you see the uh, amount of flooding in Mumbai has reduced over the last five years, six years. Right. It's because of the pumping stations. Earlier, Mumbai used to be flooded till about the chest level yeah. and for two, three days. Now it's waterlogging till about the knee or ankle. That's a natural phenomenon. But even in times of heavy rain, for example, one of the nights in September, we had 114 mm of rain in a night and Mumbai did not flood. So pumping stations is a major issue. Of course, uh, education we're giving a lot of focus on in terms of technology, bringing in tabs, virtual classrooms for 480 schools, sanitary pads in all schools. So these are issues that we're focusing on and um, I think we've got a priority set in that matter that of course the citizens have to be helped first in terms of shops and establishments and uh, every permission of the BMC. We've got everything online to make it transparent, as transparent as the commissioner's remarks to be out there on the website itself. 
So all these issues are being looked at by the Sena. And what about women's safety issues? Because we know for the fact that Shiv Sena in all the neighboring uh, cities as well, they have been very protective about women's yes. safety issues. But uh, off lately, we have been seeing that uh, you know there has been a lot of crimes that have happened, have taken place in the past. So what about uh, what on the women's safety issues? See, like a couple of uh, issues, like for example, safety, traffic and all, which are not under the jurisdiction we hadn't put in our manifesto because these were not uh, BMC issues. However, having said that, uh, uh, what we are trying to do now is Akshay Kumar and I run an academy for women's self-defense and we believe that no one should be dictating to women of what time they should be stepping out or what they should wear because they aren't responsible for the attacks that happen on them. Primarily, the focus would be to take these self-defense classes with whoever wants to help us into BMC for free training of all the girls right. for self-defense. So that is there, of course, uh, another major initiative that has worked out is uh, the, the, uh, the room that we've made at um, this, the BMC headquarters. You have, uh, basically you have a war room there which connects the Army, Navy, Air Force, Police and every ward of the BMC but we've given connectivity to 5,000 CCTV cameras that keep a watch on Mumbai streets connected to the police. So the police and the BMC are working in close sync on that. So these issues of course are majorly on a priority but as I said self-defense training would be a major boost for the Mumbai schools. And my last question to you uh, is that we know to form a majority like you know in the BMC of course uh, a party needs 115 seats so Shiv Sena has 184 seats this time around and there's a strong like you know rumor possibility that Shiv Sena might look at post alliance with the Congress because they exactly have 31 seats of course if you do the math it will be 115 so your uh, thoughts on that? As I said you know it's it's a major win for uh, Shiv Sena 84 out of, after five terms and uh, the priority is to get back to work as soon as possible and start working for Mumbai as we have been. So um, there are a lot of, uh, it's not the 114 number, it's a different calculation. Many calculations are being worked out by each parties, but currently we're focusing on, as you see, meeting everyone who's won, uh, celebrating the victory. I think, I think that is the focus are right now. Are you also meeting independent candidates? A couple of them have joined us openly and uh, they've given the support. Thank you so Thank much. You. In fact, uh, Disha, who got us that exclusive, uh, is joining us uh, uh, with more details. Disha, uh, tell us this. Uh, you spent the day at Matoshri and a couple of things that Aditya, of course, told uh, us uh, that in, uh, in that interview. He spoke about the issues, but he also uh, 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 spoke about uh, uh, Congress there, but not much of clarity. Uh, what are the options uh, they're looking at? Because he also said that they're in talks uh, with the independent candidates. Absolutely, celebrations still continue at Matoshri. Of course, yeah, yesterday, like on Thursday, we saw that uh, the celebrations continued uh, at Shiv Sena Bhavan. But of course, on Friday, we saw thousands of people outside Matoshri, of course, greeting and meeting people, the, all of the Ma, Uddhav Thakri and uh, Aditya Thakri as well. And of course, the Shiv Sena supporters, they were out uh, cheering and celebrating the victory and all the success that Shiv Sena has got uh, over the past 25 years. And of course, on the, uh, on the 26th year as well, well, but talking about uh, alliance, post alliance, uh, of course, at this point in time, it's very early. It's uh, it's in a very nation uh, nation stage to talk about it uh, at this point in time. But what we understand is that Congress is one party that Shiv Sena is definitely looking at uh, for post alliance because 31 seats Congress has got, and of course, uh, Shiv Sena has got 84 seats. Of course, the simple calculation says 115 seats, and that's what a party needs uh, basically to form a majority in the BMC and. Of course, uh, so uh, the strategy meeting is still uh, yet to begin for the Shiv Sena because uh, Friday has been really busy day for them because they have been meeting and greeting people. So we have to wait and uh, watch for the outcome. If the Shiv Sena, uh, pa uh, you know, finds an ally in the Congress party, they will reach that magical number of 115. But uh, tell us this: uh, is there a possibility of an alliance with the BJP, or is that completely ruled out? So Shiv Sena, uh, Uddhav Thakri, of course, he had gone on record and said that BJP is the party that Shiv Sena is not definitely looking at for post-alliance and BJP and even NCP for that matter. Both these are the parties that the, the Shiv Sena is definitely not going to look at. And of course, uh, uh, this time around the fight, of course, they had fought for elections, but now they are also fighting for the mayor's post as well. BJP and Shiv Sena together, what we understand is that they are going to fill in, they, they are going 
going to give in their nominations for the mayor's election post, which uh, the elections, the polling will take place uh, in the first week of March this year. So, of course, uh, we have to because and on the 28th of February, the BMC Municipal Commissioner Ajoy Mehta will also finalize the uh, the candidates list for the mayor's post and it the deputy mayor and the mayor will be elected only before 8th of March this year. So, of course, we'll clear, keep a very close eye on all these developments. And we are going to keep a very close eye on those developments. Uh, thank you so much for those details, uh, Dishasha. They're getting us that exclusive with Aditya Thakre. Uh, even as the Shiv Sena draws up its strategy, BJP and Congress top brass also go into huddle uh, in their respective offices earlier today. BJP sources told us that they will not hesitate to sit in the opposition. Richa Sharma gets us more details. After winning 82 seats in this BMC election 2017, the BJP seems to be in very high spirits. But now is the real task of what exactly are the options that BJP has to either form an alliance with the Shiv Sena or sit in the opposition. Top officials and ministers in the BJP have told us that the BJP is not ruling out the option of sitting in the opposition or rather they would love to or want to sit in the opposition right now if there are circumstances where they are not able to form an alliance with the Shiv Sena, which still is very tentative and they haven't uh, confirmed or denied anything on that front. Apart from this, the BJP does have a lot of independent candidates for support, but their major alliance medium will still be Shiv Sena, but they are not ruling out the option of sitting in the opposition right now. Apart from this, our sources in the BJP also told us that the BJP doesn't think that the Congress will come into alliance or support with the Shiv Sena. And if such a circumstance happens, they will, they will be the first one to burst crackers because they think that no, no such circumstance, at least in this BMC election, will happen. Apart from this, uh, a high-level meeting will go underway today at Varsha, that is CM's uh, residence, where all the top brass officials of the BJP from MPs, MLAs will meet up to discuss what options exactly do they have in this BMC election to form a government or sit in the opposition. This is Richa Sharma for Magic Bricks Now. BJP, they're happy to sit in the opposition. Meanwhile, Congress, with 31 seats in hand, is in a wait-and-watch mode. Remember, it can be the kingmaker, considering it can either ally, uh, you know, find an ally with the BJP or the Shiv Sena. Uh, the party now has decided to wait till both the parties, Shiv Sena and the BJP, make up their mind and take a stand. At this point in time, the BJP and the Shiv Sena are uh, holding strategic meets to decide what step to take next. In the meantime, the Congress party is in a wait and watch mode and that's exactly what uh, Ashok Chawan uh, in an exclusive conversation with Aishwarya Palwal told us. Listen in. I'm joined by the former Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Mr. Ashok Chawan. Sir, I'll start by asking you, what is uh, your reading of the numbers that we have got in this BMC elections? How, how are you looking at fixing it? No, BMC, of course, uh, the performance was not as good as we had expected. Nevertheless, the Congress Party's leadership in Mumbai, we have tried our level best. There have been some shortcomings, but uh, well, nevertheless, we are 31 number, which is quite important and decisive today. So whatever stand the party takes will decide the future of uh, the Mumbai Corporation. So you said that 31 is an important number. Actually, where Congress stands, it can be the kingmaker. What is the game plan going forward? No, we don't want to play any games in Mumbai. We mm. want to see that Mumbai progresses. We are in for development of Mumbai. Mm. The party has a positive stand uh, in Mumbai. Now, first of all, uh, the Shiv Sena and BJP, the, the, the alliance itself has a large number. So I don't think we have anything to say to add to that. Let them first decide about the alliance, whether they want to continue in alliance or not, is for them to decide. Mm. Then, of course, we will see that we are waiting and watching the situation, how it emerges. Hypothetically, imagine if Uddhav Thakre does pick up a phone call and calls you, what will be the reaction I then? I won't comment on any hypothetical uh, situations. Uh, we are uh, waiting and watching the situation and I feel that since they have together, they don't require anybody. Away from the BMC elections 2017, moving on now, an alarming rise in C-section surgeries in India, mostly in private hospitals, is now under the scanner after a petition was signed by over 1.3 lakh people. Women and Child Development Minister Menaka Gandhi has written to Health Ministry suggesting to make it mandatory for hospitals to 
publicly display the number of C-section surgeries and normal deliveries carried out. Deepa Rana gets us more details. The Minister for Women and Child Development, Menka Gandhi, has written to Union Health Minister J.P. Nadda on the issue of unwarranted C-section surgeries done across the country. The move comes in after a petition was signed on change.org that has received over 1 lakh, uh, 1 lakh signatures by women who complain against various, various nursing homes as well as uh, hospitals for uh, pushing them towards uh, the surgical operations instead of natural birth for monetary profit. In fact, uh, the minister has also urged to name and shame such doctors who indulge in such practices uh, for monetary profit or for monetary gain. In fact, I have that uh, uh, this petition right now with me. This is a petition that has been signed by uh, at least one lakh women. Also, according to the WHO norms, the total number of cesarean cases done across the country must be 15% of the total deliveries in the country. However, according to the survey or according to the official data, there are some alarming numbers over here. As you see, in Telangana, the rate at which cesarean cases is being done is over 55%. In various other states like Tiripura, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal as well. The demand is clear. There has to be penalties against such hospitals and doctors who indulge in such cases. Deepa also caught up with the Women and Child Development Minister Mainika Gandhi. Listen in. Normally, yeah, as things go, cesareans should not be more than 10%. In this country, in some states, they've gone up to 58%. All it means mm. is that the doctors are indulging in a racket to make money without having any consideration or respect for women's bodies. In a, you know, a woman can't have more than two cesareans and most of them don't need cesareans because this is a natural function. And to forcibly push them into cesareans just because uh, you want to make more money is illegal in a way and it's immoral certainly. So you charge the woman more, you invade her body and instead of a natural process you make, you cut her open, you give her stitches, you give her anesthesia. She takes weeks and weeks to recover while feeding the baby and it weakens her body for more children if she should want them it's not acceptable anymore unlike this government took action on stents when it was found that six and a half thousand rupees worth of stent was being sold for one lakh eighty thousand and the doctors were earning we calculated up to seven thousand crores a year um, the cesarean if you'll find the amount of money being earned will roughly fall into the same uh, area because the difference is between two and three thousand rupees and fifty thousand one lakh especially by the larger hospitals so this has to be dealt with so what we have done is we've asked the health ministry a to issue an order that every hospital put it on its board how many cesareans they've done this month every gynecologist lets us know um, you know the medical council should be checking how many uh, cesareans have been done by each gynecologist We've come across gynecologists who for eight years have not done a natural birth. Now, should, they, should their license not be revoked? Certainly should. Right. And commercialization of cesarean is also becoming common because sometimes the doctors tend to blame the mothers by saying that they are the ones who are opting for it and because of that we are doing it. No. It, uh, you know, if you explain something in a way that the mother takes an option which she thinks is uh, simpler, then it's your fault. If you say, oh, if you go into labor, you will take eight hours and then you will suffer so much and, and, and blah, blah, blah. Or if you say, oh, we, we just, you know, it's a nothing. You just get a tiny little slit and the baby comes out and then you live happily ever after. Then obviously the mother is coerced um, into something that she believes is a better option. But there's never a better option. Uh, so when you've asked the health ministry, when are you expecting a decision on it? Let's see. Now we'll have a round of of trying to uh, finalize what are the rules and what are the pressures that we're going to put to straighten out this terrible industry. Well, I have personally undergone a very unnecessary cesarean section and I was talking to a lot of women who were telling me their experiences which was very similar to mine. And it is an open thing that, you know, cesareans can be life-saving but it is not just being done for saving lives, it's also being done to make money. So there is a very commercial purpose behind it. 
so cesarean sections when it's commercialized is not what we want this petition is clearly targeting that commercialization it is telling all hospitals that give us publicly what your individual institutional rates are as far as cesarean sections go so that will clearly tell us that you know if if who says that the rate should be 10 10% or 15% and uh, the national figures are telling us that it is above 70% for some states then there is definitely a gap there which needs to be this this is a health crisis it is jeopardizing the safety of so many women your uh, petition has some really glaring figures you know when you talk about telangana hyderabad even uh, mumbai there's 70% th there is in a the in, the, in in the private facility yes. and so there is a becoming more and more, more and more common these days it's considered one of the ways that doctors recommend uh, to mothers that it will be for the safety of the child do you agree by that the only uh, it is like a lollipop at the end so mothers are being scared away you're you're actually instilling fear in their mind and saying that you will have a healthy baby at the end of it yes it is important to have a healthy baby but that is not the only thing we want healthy mothers also and for that we need good safe practices unnecessary surgeries major surgeries which is which can cause blood loss which can cause so many complications postnatal depression rates are higher breastfeeding issues can be you know it it gets very complicated after a surgery so therefore it has to be questioned that why is it becoming so high why is it becoming so rampant it's becoming like more of a scam these days the commercialization of cesarean is becoming more common and more of a scam i think as a common citizen of india i definitely feel that it is not a transparent process there is definitely some kind of parda which is coming in between and i'm not being able to see the real picture and as a part of the administration i think uh, the minister herself also said that you know she has commented that yes it is a kind of scam how many people have joined this petition how many people have signed the petition there's a there's a huge response that you're getting yes. and from uh, the women and child minister and from now that the you know they she's also passed it to the health yes. minister what are you expecting i am expecting absolutely you know nothing less than quick action on this because many people are supporting this just imagine i have made an online petition and around a lakh and 30000 people have signed and how many people have access to social media in our country so if only we could go and knock on doors this could run into crows i think so many people are there whose voices i am just representing that and definitely we we need to act on this very soon because as long as we don't do that we are risking the lives of many women every day On to a shocking incident in Bengaluru now. More skeletons seem to tumble out of Bengaluru's preschool closet. In six days, seven FIRs have been lodged against the educational institution. It is alleged that more than 20 to 30 children uh, would have fallen prey to school supervisor Manjunath's abuse. While the alleged uh, serial child molester is cooling his heels behind bars a school principal who is the daughter of a congress mlc lakshmi narayan is out on bail shrija gets us more details more and more skeletons seem to tumble out of a preschool in belandur after a 3 and a half year old girl was molested by a supervisor of this very school what we understand is that uh, a spate of firs have been filed uh, against this very school and also on uh, the uh, principal veena as well as manjunath who happens to be a serial abuser sexual abuser what we know is that in the last 6 days at least 7 firs were filed by parents and these parents are taking help of major aditi mohan who is an ex army officer and she is helping these parents go through this uh, the legal course of this very sexual molestation case what we understand is that it is alleged that at least more uh, students at least 20 to 30 uh, little children have fallen prey especially to this serial abuser manjunath what we also know is that the school the principal as well as uh, manjunath the supervisor have been booked under various sections of ipc as well as pokso act but meanwhile while the police is investigating this case to find out if more and more cases have been uh, meted out to the children what we know is that uh, the principal veena happens to be the daughter of uh, congress mlc lakshmi narayan while the molester serial molester manjunath 
Ramnath is cooling his heels behind the jail, the central jail that is the Parapana Agrahara jail. This principal who has been booked under POXO has been released on bail. In Bengaluru, Shrija for Magic Breaks now. The principal completely denied that this is not possible and uh, the accused Manju Bhaiya in this situation cannot do anything like that. There are certain standards and guidelines that are being followed. We do not allow anybody and so the parents felt that they were not being supported. They decided to go to the police station to file an FIR against the individual. The individual was behind the bars. We lodged a complaint which was like four page with the documentary evidence uh, uh, with the supporting uh, signatures of all the parents but uh, it was not converted into an FIR and that was the situation. We heard a lot of gyan from all the uh, police authorities starting from the inspector to the DCP to the additional commissioner. The parents ended up actually feeling a little threatened. The questions that were being put and told was you're being speculated. When we took admissions we were uh, we were told that uh, none of the uh, none of the male staff will ever get inside. In fact, the fathers are also not allowed inside the school. So it was uh, negligence uh, on part of the principal who was uh, aware of everything going on inside the school. There, there was a very uh, weak uh, FIR filed and uh, the case which principal uh, was put under was section 188 which was so weak that she just went, she bailed out on thousand, mere thousand rupees. And that's a wrap on the news on Magic Bricks now. Stay with us. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magicbricksnow. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at magicbricksnow. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash magicbricksnow.